Hey everyone, Joe VK3BL here, and as part of my um, FT817 slash FT818 uh, upgrade series, as you will, um, I decided to test out the Yaesu M MH or Microtel 36 Echo 8 Juliet um, DTMF microphone. Uh, I always thought it would be really cool to have a DTMF microphone on the 817 or 818. Um, this was back in the days when you still sent DTMF tones to, to repeaters and, or IRLP or Echolink or something like that, but I always thought it would be a nice microphone to have, especially seeing as though it has, you know, your extra fun extra buttons for extra functionality. Now, boy was I disappointed to learn that the only thing this microphone offers over the stock one is that you can send DTMF tones while you're transmitting. These buttons, as in none of these buttons, do anything with the 818 or the 817. They're completely superfluous. I do lie, you can get a nice red glow out of them if you turn the lamp on, but you can't use them to program memories, you can't use them to change power, you can't use them to do anything you would on an 857 or an 897 or a 991 or basically any other Yaesu radio ever made. On the 817 and the 818, they don't do anything except for send DTMF tones while transmitting. Really, Asu? Seriously? How is that not written all over the box? Very disappointed. Anyway, so that's strike one. Would you buy this microphone? Well, only if you're really dedicated to IRLP. Strike two was the fact that I was in what I call the horizontal shack, which means I was lying down in bed one night having a chat to my mates. And I was running 100 milliwatts, I believe, whatever the lowest power setting is, out of the 818. I was running it directly into a Diamond X510 antenna outside. Now, the antenna was connected, was, I guess, not connected, but, um, well, the antenna is installed onto a, a, a metal pole, which is concreted into the ground, so it is grounded, I suppose, but... Um, as far as all the radio and shack equipment was concerned, the radio was floating. Um, there was no ground to the radio. It wasn't plugged into the 240 volts or the mains power supply. It was just running off battery, sending a 100 milliamp hour out to an antenna that was about 10 meters or 30 feet away from me. And if I had my laptop on top of me while I was lying in bed and I keyed up, my friends reported that 50 to 30% of my signal was RFI. Seriously, 100 milliwatts. 100 milliwatts and a laptop on top of you gets RFI into this microphone. Are you serious? So, all in all, I'm really disappointed. That's two massive strikes. I mean, I could forgive it maybe if it was 100 watts or 50 watts or Anything but 100 milliwatts, seriously, Yesu. Like, how hard is it to shield the microphone somehow? Um, so there's my frustration. So basically, essentially, unless you have a real need for DTMF, don't buy this microphone. I will say one nice thing about it, and I do continue to use it for that reason. I just have to not have my laptop plugged into the charger if I wanna lie in bed and talk to my friends. Um, and that's basically, it has an electric microphone, so it actually has a nicer sort of sound. It's a bit, bit sharper. People will report my voice is easier to understand on this microphone, um, so long as I take precautions against the RFI. Um, and in that way, it does beat out the, st shock mic the stock microphone, the MH31, Microtel 31. Um, and the only other thing I guess you could say in its favour is being an, being an electric design, it is a little bit more durable. Plenty of people have found these MH31s have gone bad on them. I've had one myself die. Um, pretty much everyone I've spoken to who owns an MH31 has had one go bad. So the two positives to this are the electric microphone gives you better articulation, people can understand you better. It's a little bit lighter, I suppose. You could add that as a, a half a point. And it's probably, I'm saying probably because I don't know, it's probably more durable. On the downside, 
you don't get any real increased functionality. Um, no one sends tones to repeaters anymore. It was like, you know, 2000s calling. And um, the fact that you can't, you know, use the, the A, B, C, D keys to do anything meaningful with the radio is just, well, we, we would just say it's piss poor performance in Australia. Piss poor performance, sorry about that. Um, it's just crap. So all in all, um, that's on my don't buy. Don't bother. Um, that's not an upgrade to your 817, really. Um, the best thing you could probably do is stay with this housing and just go and change the element. There's plenty of um, guides on the internet um, on how to repair these if they've stopped working or how to change them to, to, be, to use an electric element. So that's my recommendation. Um, Yesu, lift your game. I've used all of your different hand mics and they pretty much suck across the board. Um, I had an 857 that had the MH59, I think it is, the one with the little wheel on it and all the remote controls. And that got just as much RFI into it too. Now, granted that was a 100 watts vehicle mounted, you can't really get away from the antenna when it's three feet or one meter or two meters or whatever in front of you. But, you know, they, they, sh they should have thought of that. Did they not do any testing? So anyway, basically what I'm trying to say is, yes, these microphones are a waste of money. Um, thumbs down. Anyway, this is Jared VK3BL. Spitty the honest truth about Yaesu accessories. If you uh, if you want to upgrade your 817 or your 818, don't bother.